So uh, every city, every area, every state that I go to, and I want to order food, and I open up an app. Uh, one of the top, the one, of the one of the brands that comes on the top of the search is in most of these cities that I go to, and I'm like, wow, what scale? And I order, I usually order momos from there, and then I'm like, wow, what taste? Then at uh, Taikon this year, I heard the man behind this uh, Sagar Dadiani. and i was like ye brand ka naam ye bande ki energy se mila hua hai uh, by the way the tagline of this uh, webinar is uh, a story of a boy from 80 square feet to 80, 860 crore valuation and uh, sagar i would uh, like to welcome you on stage uh, on the virtual stage to elaborate more on our tagline uh, i think all of us are very keen and uh, keenly waiting to listen to your story over to you please thanks thanks anket glad to be here hope all safe and wow uh you know was really uh, inspiring listening to each of the panelists and uh, i think some good questions asked by you very relevant ones uh joined in a bit late so missed i think i missed a couple of panelists but yeah uh would love to you know uh, chat up with them offline and and take it up so yeah uh our story has been something like a bollywood blockbuster by god's grace uh my friend binod and me started wow momo 11 years ago uh on the 29th of august Uh, with an investment of only rupees thirty thousand. Now, how do you start a business with rupees thirty thousand? So, in India, you know, if you have to start a startup, you have to know how to do jogar. And I think we did our jogar. Uh, you know, we 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 went ahead with a shop and shop format with Spencer. Spencer is a very big supermarket chain in Calcutta. So we did a shop and shop format where we didn't have to worry about the flooring, about the ceiling. Uh, you know, uh, it was a plug and play model for us. So we had a small six feet by six feet flex kiosk, and that's how we got going. So the eighty square feet was actually thirty six square feet, to be honest. and my home kitchen became my base kitchen where we would prepare the momos and uh, you know i would wake up at 5:30 in the morning take my bicycle go and buy chicken buy vegetables and uh, you know there would be a part time chef whom in those days we would pay him 3000 rupees he would come every day and uh, make momos early in the morning for 2 hours and go that same chef today you know he he does a five uh, fat a five figure salary he comes in a four wheeler he has a house to himself his daughter goes to the best english medium school in calcutta so i think it, that's what it is all about you know you need to make wealth to share wealth and uh, uh you know, and, and 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 that's how your people grow with you and that's how your team grows and when your team grows your company grows so i guess that's how we know that me got started uh you know since childhood i was always fascinated by brands you know there was this uh, in my textbooks would be full of the logo of a nike of an adidas of a reebok so always wanted to build my own brand and you know what best way to do it uh other than food you know because food is something that goes by the word of mouth you know you like you go and tell your friends they go and tell their friends so i think uh, there was this lady in my school who would come and sell momos we would call her momo auntie and her momos were amazing you know in in one plate would have five pieces and uh, you know i would buy one plate and just get one piece to eat my friend would gobble the rest so that made me believe that you know good quality momos can sell uh, so i said you know if people can play with burgers with pizzas why can't we play with momos and that's how wa momo got going uh, i remember you know in my initial days uh, uh i i was staying uh, in a location in calcutta and my first store my first kiosk uh you know we had to travel in calcutta you don't have metered auto rickshaws you know you have shuttle auto rickshaws so we had to take two auto rickshaws to get to my first destination the momos would be carried in my tupperware containers which i had uh, robbed from my mom's kitchen and you know i would carry them in bastas and while coming back at night because the momos would get sold out um uh, you know we would my 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 co-founder binod and me we would walk one way just to save rupees 10 uh and you know try and avoid one auto rickshaw and come back in one auto rickshaw so that's when we realized the value of money we realized that in business one rupee saved is five rupees earned and i think that 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 passion has been inculcated within the organization till today i think we take the cheapest flight whether it's 3:30 am in the morning or at 5 in the morning or or whether it's 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 late night at 10 10:30 11 so i guess that's where we learned you know the value of business and how to grow so binod and me started off uh, doing everything by ourselves we would wear the wamomo t-shirt you know walk up to every customer with a tray in my hand right like, and you know tell them hi sir hi ma'am we've opened a new food counter uh why don't you come and taste uh the product and see we would cut one momo into four parts never had money to print leaflets so you know i we believed in a product we knew ko koi ek baar hamara momo khayega they'll become ours forever so that's how we got going from a mere rupees 30000 we did well in that first spencer store uh spencer's gave us another store in the best mall of calcutta which is south city mall and that small store a 90 square feet store became the talk of the town you know i mean people from all over the city would come to that mall to watch movies to shop at supermarket but there was this small chotu sa momo shop which they were all fond of and uh, from that 90 square feet we started doing revenues of 2 lakhs a month 3 lakhs a month 4 lakhs a month went up to 9 lakhs a month 
and uh, today that same stood other on 11 lakhs a month and and i think that small store made us a brand save money from 2 opened 4 4 to 6 6 to 8 so right from 2008 till 2008 9 till uh, 2015 you know we bootstrapped plowed back profits our biggest investor was the consumer you know we did not have any debt funding did not have any equity funding so the consumer was the biggest investor uh, saved money made profits uh, multiplied stores got into cities like bangalore pune chennai and uh, i think we got to 43 stores we got to our top line of 1920 crores that's when we raised our first round of uh, you know angel funding we raised around 10 crores from the indian angel network uh, prior to that you know we were offered uh, a term sheet from the same i and in 2011 at a 10 crore valuation uh, and we said a no because we were not funding ready uh, prior to that i had no knowledge about private equity funding angel funding but uh, there was this tycon that happened in calcutta where i happened to participate and we won that business plan competition and then iin gave us a term sheet that's when i read, read these lines like tag along drag along and i was like scared you know like ye log to mere se mere business chin lenge <laughs> but it actually made me realize that you know there is something known as angel funding private equity funding and it also made us realize that we are not funding ready you know i mean funding is like an ammunition you know you need to put it into your business investors put money into your business so that your business can multiply and grow to the next level but i think till then it was only been more than me we never had a second line in place and that's when we realized that you know if we have to become if we have to move from a brand to a corporate organization we have to build a second line in place uh, we have to get funding ready to expand and to scale and from 2011 to 15 we worked upon it we got a team in place and and in 15 we raised money again from the same iin i am grateful to them that they came back again and we raised at a 100 crore valuation so you know one thing i learned then in life was to learn to say no with confidence to be honest to yourself uh, to look up to yourself where you look up to yourself in front of the mirror and just say that you know it is not possible for me to do this right now and maybe i could do it later but just be very honest to yourself so we were very honest to ourselves it was very tempting very uh, you know i mean i mean a term sheet a funding sounds a very sexy thing you know it was very tempting to you know say a yes to i and then but we said a no and we held on uh, we built a build the organization we built people into the business uh, we got replacements for ourselves we got a second line in place and then in 2015 when we actually raised money we raised money at a whopping 100 crore valuation one of the one of the largest valuation in the food space why so we were valued in that way is because a we were profitable i feel proud to say that today we are the only profitable home grown qsr chain uh, with more than 100 stores and all our stores are company owned and company operated so today at 345 stores uh, it is it is all company owned company operated and uh, i think i think whether it's jubilee and dominos or kfc or pizza hut or 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 a burger king all are international chains so i think we're the only home grown indian chain to you know be out there do that and i'm proud of the way the team has really shifted up and taken this uh, you know this this brand to a new category that we have built in qsr so today you know if we walk into any mall they uh, or any new mall opening up they first sign up a dominos a burger king a kfc a subway and then a wow momo so we have actually made a category in the qsr space uh, and and not just a category i believe we have actually converted this into an industry uh, uh, and and i'll talk about it a bit later but uh, yeah that's how our story has been so you know i met my mentor sanjeev bichindani in 2015 and he became my lead uh, uh, investor in the iin uh, we had 96 people investing with us so it was the largest angel round in terms of number of people also participating wow. people like krish gopala krishnan of infosys to arvind singhal of technopack to uh, sunil munjal of hero corp all were a part of a cap table and uh, that's when you know we said funding is like an ammunition so we the two biggest markets for us were delhi and bombay you know both were really high on real estate so we entered the delhi markets because uh, in delhi momo was already known you know we just had to build the brand not the product and uh, we took that funding entered the delhi markets and uh, in the next two years we happened to reach 108 i mean from 43 we got to 108 stores uh, we 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 increased our profitability we came from a, a, i think a 5 to 6% ebitda to a, i think a 9% ebitda and uh, that's when we raised our first round of series a funding from lighthouse funds now lighthouse is one of the best consumer funds in india they have invested in brands like fab india uh, nike uh, kama ayurveda uh, bkg etc etc so we really like them we felt that you know they are the right partners to have they understand the qsr space in india unko dhanda samajh mein aata hai that's what we felt and we felt they are the right partners to to tag along with and uh, when we raised money from lighthouse we were 108 stores we were at a top line of around 49 crores that's when we uh, entered the bombay markets you know because again use the funding like an ammunition to enter mumbai uh, the most expensive market in terms of real estate and uh, right from there to the, for the next two years we got to a 244 stores from 108 we got to a top line of around 118 crores 
uh, have been growing at a 50% CAGR year on year. Uh, employment grew from a thousand to a two thousand, and uh, it was last year in September when Tiger Global came in. Uh, you know, they've only done tech, tech, tech in India, and we were the first consumer brand that they invested in. Uh, they came in at a whopping eight sixty crore valuation. We raised another hundred and twenty crores from them. We gave an exit to our angels at an eight x return. So the angels literally made an eight x in 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 three and a half years, and uh, many of them did not take an exit and are still held on to the company. So. Yeah, I think I think it's it's been nothing less than a blog, Bollywood blockbuster journey for us. Uh, today we are at 345 stores, uh, 2,700 employees, and uh, profitable by God's grace. So it's it's been a wonderful wonderful journey. But what excites me the most is 2,700 employees, and you know I want to take this number to 5,000 and then maybe 50,000 someday because you know every morning when you wake up, uh, the kind of kick that it gives you that you know you and your decisions are responsible for so many lives, right? And 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 you feel empowered. You feel that uh, you know you are uh, you have that uh, uh, you know that uh, God has been kind to you. God has blessed you with uh, you know with 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 a position where you can actually make and uh, change people's life. You can make a difference to people's life, and you can try and add value to the society. So yeah, I think I think it's it's been a phenomenal. It's been a wonderful journey. Now, what is it that made us wow? You know, I mean, if you if you ask me, uh, I think when we began Wow Momo, you know, momos were largely available. In uh, steamed, fried, and I mean, in the in the steam format, right? You would get only chicken and veg momos. So we initially came up with uh, you know different flavors of momos, and uh, just one sec. One sec. Uh, think sa- Yeah. So when we began Wow Momo, uh, you would get largely steamed momos available in chicken and veg. We came up with different flavors of momos, like a chicken and cheese, like a chicken shezwan, um, like a fish, like a prawn, like a corn and cheese, mushroom, paneer. Uh, you know, we, we we were the first to create different flavors, but you know, adding flavors to momos was a very, very small kind of an innovation. The next big thing for us, which became a game changer, was the pan fried momos. You know, the momos are fried and tossed in specially prepared sauces. Uh, so the momos in shezwan sauce, tomato, garlic sauce, that became a game changer product for us, you know. Uh, I mean, I mean, it is still one of the highest selling categories for us. It is spicy, it is chatpata. So, you know, we Indianize momos. We gave India what it wants. Indians love spicy stuff. Indians love masala added to their uh, flavoring and that's what we did. So, you know, doing the steam and the pan fry was a very natural innovation. We said if we can do steam and pan fried, why can't we do fried momos? You know, where the momos are fried and it's crispy. So, steam, fried, pan fried was a very normal uh, innovation. The next game changer for us, how do we convert this snack into a meal? So whenever I would walk into a McDonald's, you know, I would be fascinated to see people carrying food in a tray, right? And I was like, how can I, you know, make people carry momos in a tray? How do I convert this snack into a meal? And uh, that's when we launched a momo burger, you know, a mo burger, where we stuffed two pieces of fried momo between the burger breads with the spicy red sauce, the green sauce, and mayonnaise with it. So momo burger became the next big thing for us. So you add 90 bucks to your momo, you get a Pepsi and a burger with it. So momo burger and Pepsi is like a full meal. Uh, that became our first transition towards a meal. As we grew further, we entered the Bangalore markets. We had to increase our APCs. We had to increase our average ticket size because the rentals were higher. We opened up in the best mall of Bangalore and Phoenix Market City. And uh, till today in that mall, we do higher numbers than an American burger chain, American pizza chain. We were the first brand to open in that food court, I remember. And uh, uh, we came up at Sizzler Momos, you know, where we serve six pieces of momos, three steam, three pan steam with rice and noodles with it uh, and a curry to go with it. So, you know, one guy ordering it in the queue and 10 more people waiting in the queue to watch it. It's sizzling, it's served. Jo dikta hai, wo dikta hai. So, you know, uh, in any good mall on a given Saturday or on a given Sunday, we end up selling 200, 300 sizzlers. So that became the next big meal, you know, it became like a meal for two people. So that's how we've grown our product category. When we enter the Delhi NCR markets, you know, we realized people in Delhi really, really love tandoori stuff a lot. So we came up with tandoori momos, you know, we came up with a baked momo gratin, which is very cheesy. You know, it's like a lasagna. So you have a layer of pan fried momos, the highest selling product, then white cream, noodles, cheese, and thick like a lasagna. So I think that's how we innovated and reinvented our product. Uh, the only thing missing was a dessert. So we said, you know, if uh, we are a momo brand, then a dessert also has to be a momo. And that's how we came up with chocolate momos in 2012. And it's, 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 it's almost 3% of our revenue. So for a dessert, that's a very high category. And uh, that's how we've grown. We've innovated. We've done stuff like heart-shaped chocolate momos on Valentine's Day. We've done tricolor sauces on Independence Day, Republic Day. We've really played with the product. We've made food fun. And I think that's where our innovation lies in how do you make food fun? How do you relate your brand, your product 
to the lives of people you know to the society how do you engage with the society and become a part of them see we were never a brand from the us or uk that you know we would open our store on day 1 and there would be a queue of 1 km you know we had to build that traction we had to build that brand and i am someone who believes that you know brands are built in the minds of the of the consumer so you know uh, everything that you do talks about your brand right from the look and feel of your store to the t-shirt your employee wears to the way he smiles to the packaging to 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 everything you know so if you go to any warm up store you see the bright yellow signage you know it's there to attract people you know we we wanted to roll eyeballs we wanted people to come to our store we believed in our product we knew ko ek bar hamara momo khayega they'll become ours forever but to bring them to the store for the first time you know we had to focus on the look and feel of the brand on the positioning give it a shape give it a color and then that, that that's what builds brands you know that's what builds brands and what do you do with that brand i mean today we are one of the first qsr chain in the country to hire transgenders you know we have 70 transgenders working with us looking at us other qsr chains have started doing that uh, we have more than 200 especially uh, special colleagues working with us people who cannot hear cannot speak but their smile on their face wins over the faces of consumers uh, they are the best uh, upsellers i would say when it comes to the qsr space so yeah we've been very innovative we we've, we've tried to be a very inclusive brand we work with 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 people we've tried to reach to every every strata of the society uh, you know i mean today if you want a job in wabomo you don't have to be a a a class 12 uh, uh, or or a, or a graduate you know you you can even be a class 8 fail as long as you are willing to work hard you have honesty integrity and you have a smile on your face i think this is something that we really really value upon we are we are a brand of young india we try to portray the young india we try to portray the youth and uh, yeah there's a lot that's happening uh, two learnings for me that you know i really want to share which i believe uh, uh, can be related to the current scenario which is the corona times the tough time that i the way i call it is um, you know i remember uh, when demonetization happened right all of us remember demonetization it was a very tough time for all of us um, this was november 2016 and i was just about to raise my series a uh, we had a couple of term sheet from a couple of investors and as demo was announced they all went on longer and uh, christmas breaks in the month of december i remember in the month of november there was no walk ins coming into our stores for the next one week everyone was standing outside atms and everyone was uh, you know uh, looking at depositing money uh, there were no walk ins to the store business had come down by 40% the entire industry was down by some 50% and i remember in that time we did something very innovative we realized that if the consumers don't come to us we need to go to them so beside every store we have atms right uh, now outside these atms people were lining up and queuing up so what we did we got water bottles sent to all the stores we got paper cups sent to all the stores and we asked our employees to go out there and serve water to people standing in the queue as we served water they were thirsty we also gave out our menu because they are hungry we got them food delivered at the queue we got our edc machines the gprs edc machines we got it swiped in the queue and 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 if the consumers didn't come to us we reached out to them and by the end of week 2 we were down by 26% vis-a-vis -vis to the industry being down by 40% and looking at us some of my role model brands like a dominos like a mcdonalds are doing the same thing so you know that's how you convert a challenge uh, i mean a uh, a uh, 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 an adverse situation to a challenge and that challenge to an opportunity i think that's what we need to do as as as, as entrepreneurs and uh, i recall another moment that happened this was uh, i guess 2018 uh, not very not very late uh we we had opened up in bhubaneswar uh, in odisha and we opened up a first store in the sea beach town of puri now puri is known for the Jagad, jagannath temple right and the jagannath temple is known for the rath yatra so we launched our first store on the first day of rath yatra and we had planned a massive launch however there was an american cola company which had planted the entire stretch red by spending some 3 crores of money and and we said we don't have that much marketing budgets so there was a question mark on the launch on the opening we had got you know we had we had called our older customers from bhubaneswar we had done a lot of planning around the launch around the opening so we did something very different uh, we realized that you know if 5 lakh people come for the rath yatra on a daily basis and that too on the sea beach of puri is going to create a lot of litter so we we via bus we sent 50 guys from calcutta to bhubaneswar these 50 people wore the wabomo t-shirt they had a bag behind them and they became uh, you know voluntary uh, uh, cleaners to ensure that any the any dirt that is thrown in the in the sea beach they pick it up and they put it in the dustbin behind them we tied up with the municipal corporation and uh, all the vendors who were uh, there serving tea serving coffee uh, serving jhal muris uh, you know making eggs selling nariyal pani we ensured that we plant 100 umbrellas so 100 umbrellas and 50 guys uh, spent around not even 
more than two lakhs, and uh, the entire town that was painted red became yellow, and that's how we could draw traction that Avam Mosque has opened. So I think I think that's what you need to do as a as an entrepreneur. You need to you know look at adverse situations, convert them into a challenge, and try and solve that challenge to your advantage. And I think that's what we are doing in the Corona time, which I will talk a bit later. But yeah, I believe we've not just created a category in the QSR space. I think with Momos, we've created an industry. I mean, there are a lot of people who come to our stores. They they love the Vamomo sauce. Uh, we are now looking at packaging our sauces and selling in the supermarkets. Uh, we realize that you know what do they do with the sauces? So they go home, they make pasta with it, they have it with parathas, they may have it with maggi. So the Vamomo sauce is the next big thing uh, uh, going forward. Uh, you know, very soon you will see a Vamo vending machine. So you know, in your corporates, in your tech parks, you will see Vamo vending machines. to be there very very soon and a lot of other things up our sleeves which which i shall reveal later but yeah today we 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 are now not building a base kitchen anymore we are actually building a momo factory so you learned of a cement factory you've heard of a of a of a iron and steel factory or a textile factory now we have a momo factory which we are building across across 35 40 thousand square feet in the heart of calcutta in an industrial estate so yeah that's how we've actually converted this category into an industry and i think we have a long long way to go I think I think I think what's what's very important is to remain focused. Uh, I think Domino's became a brand by focusing on pizza, and we want to remain focused on momos, on the Oriental cuisine. Mm, last year, we launched our second brand called Wow China. So, you know, we actually realized that in India, right from north to south, uh, right from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, you know, uh, you go to North India, you love North Indian food. After North Indian, you prefer Chinese. You go to South India, you love South Indian food. After South Indian food, you prefer Chinese. So, although Chinese is number two in 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 uh in preference is number one in consensus so we said you know we've actually not really cracked the momo business we've cracked the business of operating qsr in india so how can we make chinese food qsr ish so to experiment first we launched a brand called walk is wow within wow momo uh, when we opened a 150 at store in calcutta and uh, we realized that the product was excellent but somewhere it was getting lost within wow momo because people would come to our wow momo store just to eat momos so outside our store we we planted one uh, nepalese guy who had a french beard looked like a like a chinese and we taught people how to use chopsticks and how to use the wok box and we then we realized that you know once once we are positioning it as chinese and as wok people don't understand what wok is but they are they are they are happy to come in and try the product and the response was phenomenal and that's when we felt that you know if we have to play with chinese we have to build a separate brand around it and that's what led to the formation of wow china which is our very second brand and now we have 27 stores across across six cities and uh, is got off to a to a blockbuster start again we are there in phoenix market city mall in kulla in bombay we are then carter road in bombay and and we then a few malls across the country so the best part is wherever a wow store is doing well we can plant a wow china there so we can we have the knowledge and the bandwidth of 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 the geographical location and how well it's performing for us so so the next 100 stores planting them is not going to be a big challenge what's going to be a bigger challenge is to ensure that how do we convert this into a qsr formation and that's what we've done we've cracked it Uh, it's a trade secret i can't share it but yeah today when you come to wow china it is live chinese and it is qsr ish so that's been our journey that's been our story till now and yeah happy to um, you know get into some questions from people and 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 would love to answer them i think i think i think that's a that's a crazy wow story uh, you've uh, <clears throat> you kind of proved that you know uh, innovation not only in product but innovation in marketing is also so important uh, uh, your story also obviously tells us how important it is to i think a uh, bootstrap for an entrepreneur before getting into funding uh, i think it takes balls of steel uh, to uh, say no to a 10 crore funding uh, back in 2011 i don't know how you did that but that was that is amazing uh, uh, you you i mean you know your story obviously says that you know you have your feet on the ground you have your ears on the ground so how do you inculcate this culture into your uh, into your uh, employees sagar so how do you yeah it's uh... i guess uh, see i think i think it's very important that you lead by example so it's about how you position yourself uh, amongst your employees that's very very important and 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 what you build for your organization how do you transmit your passion into them is very very important to create a replica for yourself uh, at the same time every company has a value system to it right so how do you how do you you know put in that value system into your people uh, what are the what are the organizational ethics that you live with is very very important like i said you know we from day one we believe that 1 rupee said is 5 rupees earned and that was fair amount to us so i think i think i believe a lot in uh, in in doing by example i think action talk louder than words i think we've tried to uh, you know uh, replicate our passion into our people we've tried to uh, 
uh, work with them in a very cohesive manner. I'm someone who's believed that, you know, there's no point hiring people who've been there, done that because they're already exhausted and they become laptop centric guys. I am more happy working with younger guys who have the hunger to grow, who have a vision, who want to want to grow with the organization. And, you know, uh, you know, you only, uh, for me, real wealth is when you share the wealth with your team, right? So today we have people in our team who was my normal operations manager, joined me at a 14K salary. Today he's a national business manager. He takes six flights in a, in, in a, in a normal scenario in a week. Similarly, you know, we have people who, uh, you know, who joined us. Like I said, my chef joined me at a 3K part-time salary. Today he draws a, uh, you know, a, a, a fat five-figure salary. So, you know, it's about sharing wealth with your team. It's about making them feel empowered. It's about involving them in decision-making. It's about being inclusive. It's about giving them that freedom to work. See, only the guy who will work will make mistakes. But you have to let go of uh, certain responsibilities and power and hand it over to them. So, you know, we are at a position where it's not completely micromanaged, but not completely macromanaged. We're somewhere in the middle. It's very important to draw that line in the middle and, you know, make your team feel empowered. You know, they will only uh, work and be able to take decisions once you give them that freedom and flexibility. Yes, they will make mistakes. Allow them to make their mistakes. But that mistake should come at a cost of learning, you know, and, and, and that's what we've always believed in. So I think we've really empowered our, our, our team. We've, we've been very inclusive and we've given growth to people, you know. If people grow with you, they're bound to stay. And, you know, one good employee can get you 10 good employees. I think we've been a very employee-centric organization. We've gone out of our way to, you know, take care of, or to handhold our people. I mean, uh, recently, I mean, during this corona time, one of my employees uh, was, was down with meningitis. And, you know, we want, went out of the way to save him. You know, he, was, he was in the dead bed. We didn't bother about insurance. We didn't bother about what money the company has to spend. We said, yeah, zindagi se bada kuch nahi hai. And this is the promise that we have made to all our employees. Ki, yaar, uh, jab tak jaan hai, to tab tak hamari shaan hai. To, you know, we will do anything to save your life when it comes to a medical uh, exigency to, for you or for your family. And, you know, when you do it for one employee, there are another thousands who are watching it. So I think, I think, I think doing by example is the biggest form of learning. And, and once you build that trust, that faith within them, People will not leave you for a 500 rupees for a thousand rupees. You know, they will want a better opportunity. They will want growth. They will want to be appreciated. At the same time, they are they will be willing to work hard for it. You obviously, I mean, you know, from your uh, past examples, you've shown uh, how important the agility is in the business. Uh, and I think you've you've proved that again uh, uh, during these COVID times. Uh, you you've kind of pivoted to I mean, not pivoted, but you've opened another line of uh, uh, essentials, wow, Momo's essentials. Do you want to? Uh, speak more on that and, and uh, you really want to stress on the importance of agility in the business. Yeah, so I think, you know, adverse, adverse times call for being diverse. It calls for being, um, you know, it calls for reinventing your business model. It calls for about repositioning yourself. Um, and, you know, you have to, uh, you have to reinvent your model. You have to, uh, you know, try out newer things because when times are tough, uh, you know, it's about the fittest of the survival. It's about holding forward, you know, it's about, it's about doing things differently and to adjust and to be agile and, 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 and to survive, you know, you have to live today to survive tomorrow. I think what we did, uh, out of our 345 stores, only 67 were open for delivery. And we realized that, you know, we are doing real time food delivery within 45 minutes, the food is being served to you. Uh, what we also realized is that, you know, when you order to a, through a big basket or when you order through a grofers, they give you different slots and it, it is delivered within two days and not real time the way food has been delivered. And uh, we said, how can we utilize our asset better? How can we, so, you know, out of, out of, out of 345 stores, when you have 280 stores shut, uh, out of 2,700 employees, you only have 700 employees who are engaged and you have so many employees who are unengaged. You try to figure out ways as to how you can utilize your asset better, how you can utilize the resources better. I think we did that. Uh, we reached out to Swiggy and Zomato and we said that, you know, uh, uh, why don't we start real-time grocery delivery? And that's how we got into Vamum Essentials where we serve you Atta, we serve you eggs, we serve you bread, we serve you uh, vegetables, we serve you fruits, we serve you sanitary pads, we serve you condoms. So, you know, we serve you all forms of essentials and it's real-time delivery within 45 minutes. So you order um, for, for eggs or bread and you get it in 45 minutes. You don't have to wait for a two-day slot, uh, buy, a, buy a big basket or buy a grofer. And at the same time, you know, today, if you go to a DMAR or you go to a big bazaar, it's not real social distancing, right? People are there, it's quite crowded. So... A lot of people have taken up to this service. It's doing very well for us in Bombay. It's doing very well for us in Calcutta, in Chennai. It's not doing very well for us in, in Bangalore because Bangalore already had, um, you know, grocery online shopping to a very large extent done by Niligiris before we even got going. I mean, it's, it's doing fairly well in Delhi. So I think it's been a new business line. We've adapted and uh, we're seeing a good revenue. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's almost adding up to 35% of our current business. 
So yeah, business has come down to its one tenth. I think essentials has allowed us to come down to one eighth, uh, in spite of not also not being operational. So I think I think it's a diversification and going forward also, the way the current scenario is, you know, every ten days we have to we are we are having to relook at the business model. We have to reinvent. We have to position ourselves differently. So the current scenario is somewhere where you have to be agile. You have to reinvent yourself. You have to be, uh, you know, you have to introspect. You have to learn from the past what errors you made. You have to create. Uh, for a 2.0, which will be more more stronger, more larger going forward, you know, cash is going to be the king. Conserving cash is the most important thing. I think the biggest mantra is to you know uh, reduction of losses. We all are going to be bearing a lot of losses. How can you bring your losses to the to the least? You know, I mean, for us at Wow Momo, in the last 11 years, we've not seen a single month of losses. And the month of April, we saw the loss for the first time of seven crores. So you know, I mean, we we are we are we are grateful to God that we have cash reserves. Uh, all our profits that we've earned over the years. Uh, and 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 the funding that we have, you know, we've been able to hold for it. We've taken one call that you know, come what may, we will not do any job cuts. We are doing pay cuts for the month of April, but we are not doing any job cuts. So we've been very transparent uh, with our team. I think as a leader, you have to be very transparent with your team. You have to give them clarity. You have to give them security. And I think we've done that. We've we've told them that there will be no job cuts for the next six months. Why only now? And there might be pay cuts, but we all have to bear the gain for the larger. Uh, I mean, we all have to bear the pain for the larger gain of the organization, and that's what we we all managed to do, and you know have managed to be transparent with the team and bring them on the same page. And yeah, I mean, uh, hashtag social distancing, hashtag contactless is the new now, and 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 I think that's what we all are uh, uh, you know uh, dealing with and learning with, and and the business model is going to change. It's going to change big time. I mean, today we all uh, majority of my our business was dine in, right? You know. Delivery was only 27% of our business. Now that 27% is going to become 50%, uh, and then your delivery commissions to your aggregators is going to also be adding up. So now we are looking at creating a a, a third-party uh, you know delivery mechanism, which is run by the NRAI, which is the National Restaurant Association of India, and I'm a major part of it. I'm part of the managing committee where we are trying to build a a platform which is controlled by the restaurants. So you know you you can go to a WhatsApp uh, through an application called Dot Pay. You can you can order online by just saying a hi uh, in WhatsApp, and and it will be delivered by a third-party aggregator like a delivery or like a shadow fax or like a like a dunzo. So we are working on creating our own platform as well to reduce our costs. Uh, that's something which which I am heading at the NRAI. Uh, apart from that, uh, you know we 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 feel that a pre-order takeaway. So till now, pre-order dining was a very big thing. I think pre-order takeaway is going to be a very big thing. So you know we all need to. Uh, have that application ready where consumers can come and pre-order and do a takeaway because uh, you know going forward the consumer would not want to come and sit in your restaurant and eat but they will not mind ordering coming all the way picking up and going in themselves because you know they will they will trust you and your restaurant more because they they can themselves come and see the hygiene levels and once they have that confidence within themselves that's when your delivery will shop uh, you know shoot up because uh, you know when the lockdown began delivery business was 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 quite decent for us. And suddenly there was news of a couple of guys who were affected by the COVID, uh, delivery guys, delivery riders, and the media, you know, blew it out of proportion. But you know, we have to understand that these delivery riders and our employees are actually risking their lives and coming every day to serve you essential food on a daily basis. There are a lot of people who actually depend on outside food. There are a lot of people who don't know how to cook, who are living alone. There are a lot of people who live in guest houses and paying guests. So for them, food delivery is very, very important, and we have kept our service open because of them. Because you know, keeping your stores open for delivery only is not profitable for us. It's just to keep the show going on. It's just to be visible in the app. You know, because out of sight is out of mind. You have to be visible. And 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 uh, you know, it is it is it is quite challenging when 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 you know one one or two such cases happen and the fear psychosis develops amongst people. And 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 these are tough times. You know, and 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 you know to to uh, overpower that, to overshadow that, you have to build in confidence amongst people's minds. So, I think a lot of changes are going to happen post. Uh, the lockdown opening up, I think our industry is going to move towards contactless, towards social distancing. You will see a lot of pre-order takeaway happening. People will come to your stores. They would want to see your hygiene levels, do the collection of the food themselves, and go home or have it on the way. And then once they build confidence, they will order, you know, order online. At the same time, you know, you will see an 80-seater restaurant becoming a 40-seater restaurant. There will be social distancing happening at the restaurant. You will see a kitchen of 15 people coming down to 10 people. So you will see limitation of menu happening. Uh, you know, everyone will want to, you know, limit their menu because they would want to limit their cost. They would want to conserve uh, least amount of losses. They would want to, you know, have a very compact menu. Menu cards, you know, would not, uh, maybe no more be paper menu cards anymore. It will all be digital, you know, so you could be able to see the menu of any restaurant on the phone. 
you can make the payments on the phone so you know there will be a lot of contactless dining contactless payments mobile wallets would be the next big thing uh, people would avoid credit cards and cash also what i feel is that you know when the 2611 terror attacks happen in india you would see people standing outside malls with metal detectors now you will see a lot of surveillance happening around hygiene you know our industry is all about hygiene health happiness you will see a lot of surveillance happening around hygiene where you know anyone entering your restaurant there will be a temperature check uh, for your consumers for your own people i think we we are anyways being transparent about the delivery guys who are coming to us so anyone who's coming to uh, who's preparing the food for delivery right now we are we are actually putting the temperature on the bill uh the delivery rider who's coming from swiggy zomato we are checking their temperature and then putting it on the bill so that the consumer has complete transparency as to the guy who's coming and serving you the order his temperature has been checked so a lot of surveillance will happen around health around around a lot of precautions will come into place so we are looking at a new world post lockdown for the next few months uh however i believe i mean i believe india is going to be one of the countries that will bounce back the quickest you know uh, in our country 80% of the population including me has to work on a daily basis to pay our home emis i think uh, the advent of uh, you know enhancing our standard of living has given all of us personal liabilities personal finances and we all have to you know service that so i think india will be the fastest country to bounce back there's no doubt about it and 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 the sooner that happens the better it is uh, any vaccine for this for this disease for this virus uh, any paracetamol for this virus looks like another another 3 to 4 months but yeah fingers crossed i'm sure inshallah we'll bounce back and uh, the industry will come back to its fullest but till then is tough times we all will have to reinvent ourselves we all will have to tweak the business model a bit we all will have to focus on aspects like delivery on pre order take away and i think we should be ready for it and be ready to gear the challenges coming up so you you address your uh, role with nri to create a create a delivery model for uh, for the restaurant industry by the restaurant industry and you know uh, within the restaurant industry i think that's the that's going to be the need of the hour <clears throat> so there, there are some very interesting brands that uh, you've been you've been choosing in your essentials model i mean you know i, I was kind of discussing that with you uh, do you have any plan do you have any plans of uh, getting private labels eventually i mean you mentioned about the wow momo sauce do you plan to get a uh, fmcg momo or something like that Uh, eventually you know that's that's definitely there in 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 our plans uh fmcg momo is already a work in progress for us we are already ready with the product rather we have we were making a building a huge factory in calcutta and investing almost 12 crores in equipment uh the machines were coming from italy however because of this covid i think everything is put to pause right now mm. because now it's all about consolidating you know i mean i mean this year is about remaining alive not about fulfilling your dreams this year is about you know hanging on there holding on fort so i think whatever expansion whatever diversification that we're looking with the business line will largely happen i think next fiscal now we'll have to defer it because we have to remain alive i mean imagine 345 stores that we have now after we open up post lockdown imagine a store where i'm paying a 2 lakh rupee rent and i'm bringing a 10 lakh revenue uh, the match makes sense for me you know when that store revenue comes down to 7 lakhs and the landlord is not willing to reduce the rentals i will have to shut that store so i think post lockdown opening up we will have to do a lot of firefighting individually with the landlords as well as collectively as a fraternity uh, but you know the business model of us will change and if our business model changes and the business model of landlords will have to change the business model of aggregators will have to change the business model of banks will have to change so i think it's like a full circle we have to battle out this circle uh, it's not going to be easy i think post lockdown opening up you will first take 2 3 months to realize as to where your business is going wrong and what is the mess happening and then you will take another 6 months to clear up the mess and fortunately businesses that are able to hold for and clear the mess are going to survive there are many of your favorite restaurants there are many of your favorite brands that might not open up post lockdown you know because i already know so many of them some very good brands kickass brands who were living uh, on cash flows of a monthly basis you know now they don't have money to even pay salary to the employees so they have sent all their employees on leave without pay so it's really sad out there many will be temporarily shut and will bounce back many will be shut forever so there's going to be a lot of blood bath you know it's not it's not a good sign for our industry i think the hospitality travel tourism and the restaurant industry is going to be the worst worst affected so this year is going to be more about you know uh reinventing your business model for sure but more from the sake of consolidation i think whatever new launches that we have to do or expansion like you know when we went for lockdown at wow momo we were opening 10 to 12 stores every month uh, last financial year we opened 101 stores uh, in the month of march we had 12 stores ready to be opened but we did not open so in 11 months we opened 101 stores and we would have closed the financial year at 113 stores but we could not open and when we went for lockdown we had 40 stores in fit outs now my big challenge is that what do i do with those 40 stores you know whether the match the rentals that we signed up at will make sense or will not make sense we might have to let go of some shops you know and and out of the 40 shops 
12 were completely ready, plug and play. Another 28 had fit outs on, you know, where the flooring is done, the services are done. So we might have to let go of some locations that will be losses, but that's, that's to prevent future uh, OPEX losses to happen. At the same time, we'll have to renegotiate with the landlords. We'll have to, you know, reinvent the entire wheel. We'll have to renegotiate rentals. We'll have to ask for rental waivers for the next three months. And it's, I think it's, it's going to take us some time before we understand where the business is heading to and then, you know, clean up the mess, do the housekeeping. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be quite challenging. But yeah, with regards to Amum Essentials, we definitely have uh, not a short-term plan. We have a long-term plan. I think Amum Essentials is going to be one mechanism where we can spread the asset better. We can use our stores as, 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 as a dark kirana, you know. So, our Amum stores can be used as a dark kirana. So, you have heard of dark kitchens. I think we are the first guys to come up with dark kiranas. Um, you know, and we would want to keep products that are very different, which are not readily, readily available on the shelves. So, for example, I'm a big fan of this uh, brand called Pea Buddy, you know, and you don't get them available everywhere. Uh, they have a brand called Sirona, which, which serves organic sanitary pads. Uh, I'm, I'm a very big fan of this brand called Satviko. You know, they, they serve some amazing food, but they are not available off the shelves on a daily basis. At the same time, you know, there's going to be a new trend of do it yourself, you know, because people will not want to go out and order out too much. So, there will be a new trend of DIY, do it yourself. So, you know, you would might have a biryani kit or a momo kit or a Chinese kit. So, you know, we might not mind having these do-it-yourself kits uh, available where people can cook uh, in their homes by themselves. I think one thing that this entire lockdown has done is that, you know, it's taken back people to their roots. Uh, I, I have been someone who's been fortunate to, you know, uh, be eating my mom's food on a daily basis. You know, I used to travel so much and I'm, I've fallen in love with her home-cooked food, right? So, you know, I think uh, this lockdown is going to bring in the Indian taste buds back again to, 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 to the new flavors added onto the menu. At the same time, many people will get so bored of eating the home food that they would want to go and, you know, experiment and try out a sushi, try out something Italian, try out something Mexican, try out something Japanese. So, so you know, I think, I think it's going to work both ways. Uh, but yeah, at the Vamum Essential, we will, we will be looking at products that are not readily available, but are excellent products that can be game changers. For example, you know, we are working with this company called Organic Cart and, and they have some brilliant products uh, to offer and they're not readily available on the shelves. But at, at a Wawama Essential, you would have them, you would, you would get a white quinoa, you would get a, a, a virgin oil, uh, which is, which is kick-ass product, but largely available. So yeah, I think, I think Wawama Essential will be known for uh, innovative and niche products going forward. And along with them, when people will come to shop, people will also not mind shopping from an Ashirwad Atta or will not mind buying uh, a biscuit or, or will not buy, you know, mind buying some eggs and some bread with it. So I think that's the business line we're looking at. We hope we can create it. We hope we can build habits. We hope we can change habits and let's see how it goes. Sure. I'm going to do something interesting now. So uh, <clears throat> the other speakers on the panel, I think they have a few questions for you. So I'm going to uh, keep, put it open to the other speakers and, uh, and uh, Naveen, uh, in case, you know, you guys want to ask some questions to Sagar. Uh, Rahul, if you can unmute uh, all of them, please. Yeah, just a um, minute. I think Naveen had a question for you. I just attend Naveen's question. Hello. Uh, uh, hey, Sagar, uh, Abhinav, we have just a quick question with respect to NRAI's role. Uh, how are, uh, how's uh, NRAI, uh, you know, coordinating with, let's say, uh, uh, policy makers or, uh, you know, if there's an organization of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, realtors, right, who are into organized retail space uh, and, uh, you know, figuring out things as uh, at an organizational and economic level for the economy level. So at NRI, what we do is that we have, uh, we till now had uh, five active chapters. One was Delhi NCR, one was Bombay, one was Calcutta, and one was uh, Bangalore. And this entire COVID thing has led to the creation of a Bhubaneswar chapter, of a Chennai chapter, of a Hyderabad chapter. So what we've done is, as a fraternity, as an organization, I think we all have come forward. We've joined hands together. We all are speaking the same language when it comes to the altars. Uh, and, and our ask is the same, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's all about unity and unity is our biggest strength and we've always done that. I think NRAI, uh, uh, in the last one, one and a half years, I think we've shown it to everyone that, you know, our unity is our biggest strength. We were against deep discounting. Uh, you know, we, we literally pushed some of the aggregators to stop deep discounting. Uh, we, we literally uh, went out of the way to ensure that, you know, we, we fight for our rights, not fight, but, uh, you know, speak about our rights openly with the, with the, with the various uh, compliance authorities, with the government departments, 
we managed to push the excise fee renewal now when it, when the covid times happened i think a lot of recommendations a lot of uh, uh, submissions keep going on to the government i had the calcutta chapter i'm part of the managing committee we we have reached out to the finance minister we have reached out to niti aayog we reached out to msme the other day i was on a webinar with nitin gadkare uh, we have we've convinced him to give restaurants msme status because we are one of the largest jobs uh, creating sectors in in the country and 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 you know we've been asking for a right for getting industry status we feel retail and restaurants should get an industry status and we've been pushing for that uh, we've been fighting for the input credit for the food businesses and 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 it's been a it's 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 been a worldwide which which where where you know we we we've, we've been you know giving on submissions we've been we now we've been recognized as the body which is the body to interact with when it comes to the restaurant fraternity in the country uh, you know now we have the finance minister reaching out to us uh, to take recommendations we have we have um, the different state government reaching out to us for various recommendations so i think the body now been recognized it's a very uh, it's 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 not a very new body but it's just gone active in the last 4 to 5 years and now we are creating chapters for other other cities as well i think what this covid has done is brought many of the new chapters in place it's got all of us united together and uh, when it comes to you know renegotiating with landlords when it comes to renegotiating rentals with the mall i think we all are united uh, i am myself heading all the groups for all the cities and 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 and, and you know we have a task force in place uh, now we are looking at creating our own platform for delivery which is going to be you know 50% saving of our cost you know today if our average ticket size is 350 rupees and we end up paying a swiggy or a zomato 20% that's 70 rupees right now with our own platform we would be able to do that in 35 to 40 rupees so so a lot of uh, cost savings a lot of mutual benefits for the organization that is going to be happening and shaping up and 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 it's good for the fraternity you know because unity is going to be our strength going forward so my question here is the is exactly on the unity front because as a as a uh, you know association um, our job has to be you know uh, bring everybody on the platform and voice the, uh, the 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 problems that we are facing so rather than creating a a a separate channel why not you know we negotiate for example you are speaking with a uh, finance ministry you are speaking with a lot of other people and we are trying to create a, a better networking platform wherein we could uh, you know speak to the realtors also uh, for reducing the rentals and everything so on the similar front why can't we simply you know speak to zomato and swiggy and try and reduce their uh, the rates so that you know because uh, creating the entire structure or creating the entire technology then uh, matching up to the, uh, the you know uh, usability of the uh, customer will become a difficult task this is what i feel i'll tell you what we've tried having several uh, negotiation with swiggy and zomato to be honest the terms and conditions for swiggy and zomato earlier would get changed overnight Mm-hmm. now every term and condition of swiggy and zomato has to be passed on by the nrai and only then it is changed okay secondly the commission is a is a very uh, 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 is is a very individual factor for every businesses today today a bigger brand like dominos might be a lower commission today a, a smaller brand might be a higher commission right it exactly. also got to do a lot with the average ticket sale of the restaurant now we have to be very fair to swiggy and zomato also that you know uh today they need to earn at least 70 rupees per rider because they are also doing lead generation for us they are maintaining correct. an app right in our case when we are building our own platform we are not really building an app we are doing it through whatsapp we are doing it through a b2b technology okay. where we are not really looking at lead generation what we are looking at is converting our own customers and owning our own customers now working with okay. the swiggy and zomato what ha- what is happening is that the customer information is not with us we don't know our customers now they are our customers right and we need to know our customers right and that is something mm-hmm. that we have been vouching for and uh, believe you me hopefully sooner than later you will see swiggy zomato also sharing customer information with us that's work in progress mm-hmm. exactly uh, wow. the record, nice. but but we've been this is wow and a half years and also uh, if you remember the entire zomato gold thing and i uh-huh. stood a very tall stand against it and all of us boycotted it Talk and today it. to be very honest the gold has lost its dust it's lost its charm right correct at the same time uh, with the swiggy with the zomato we've ensured that no terms and conditions are randomly changed uh, we have uh, every quarterly meetings with them uh, whether it's swiggy whether it's zomato whether it's dine out we've tried to bring the entire industry to parity and uh, we've tried to you know uh, have uh, the commission linked as per aob which they have agreed to so you know we were on the closest stages of of this entire uh, agreement of aob linked to uh, commission and and i think i think we all moved towards a february and a march where the lockdown happened but uh, you will see a lot of action happening we've already done our homework for the last one year uh, swiggy zomato both have been very supportive to be honest and let's see where it leads to but you will see more uniformity more parity but the very fact we are not saying that we are going to disown us wigger or zomato that's not happening you know we have to live with them they have to live with us you know we have to coexist but it's going to be more of a hybrid model 
where we have our own platform at the same time we work with them now having an own platform is going to obviously strengthen us uh, we are not going to be dependent on a third party aggregator we are not going to be dependent on um, you know any kind of monopolistic practices by a couple of vendors and once we have once we are into the business and doing it ourselves without you know having our own fleet and you know outsourcing it uh, you will see them also coming to terms you will also you know they will also get to see our power of execution we'll get to see them on agreement on many terms and and you know it's it's just going to be a hybrid model you know where we use our own fleet we use their fleet and 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 you know it's again not forcing any restaurant to not boycott anyone you know because we don't mm-hmm. want to boycott anyone I think, exactly i think i think zomato for zomato and for swiggy restaurants are as important as they are important for us you know i mean for us also swiggy and zomato is important very true very true and how to start indoor chapter <laughs> because i would well, i would love to be a part of this uh, active group that you're doing yeah. please take the lead and we'll get you on board it <laughs> Fantastic. Become the chapter head, get the fraternity together. I think the more the better. I think, I think, I think, I think our our goal in NRAI post lockdown would be, you know, once we get the business back on track, would be to create as many chapters as we can. So I would be more than happy, Prashant, if we can lead the indoor chapter. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I would love to be a part of this. I would, I touch base with you on on a separate note with this. For yeah. sure, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Right, for so for a shortage of time, I'm going to uh, you know uh, stop the questions here. Uh, Sagar, I mean, you know, if you would want to end with a, a closing statement. Uh, Uh, for all the fellow food entrepreneurs here, uh, and then I will give the mic to Naveen. No, I think uh, uh, I, I missed the first two speakers, but whatever I heard was really happy uh, to know the kind of action and attraction that is happening. It's good to see uh, so many young Turks, so many food pioneers coming up in the food space. Um, you know, you guys, you guys are re- redefining the entire consumption pattern in India, and 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 you know, you're part of the new. advent of food consumption that's happening so all the best keep going if i can be of any help please reach out to me you can get my mobile number from sanket and i'll be more than happy to help uh, and yeah i think i think believe in your goal believe i mean i mean make your strength more stronger uh, be focused i think being focused is very important don't try and do anything and everything don't try and be everywhere anywhere be very focused and uh, and and i guess you guys are here as speakers because you guys have done a good job and and keep it up it's not easy running a food business i think like like you know there was this article which said that you know opening up a restaurant is much more tougher than buying a pistol which requires you know i mean i mean so many compliances exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. our business is a tough business it's it's not an easy business to be honest it's a 24/7 job uh, you know we are guys who don't love sundays we don't love holidays we work more on sunday than we work more on holidays so it's a uh, we love feeding people and that's what keeps us going so yeah i think i think uh, good job done by all you guys and wishing you all the best and reach out to me for any help any connection would be happy to help and would be happy to collaborate and also work with you guys you know if if we can do something together Fantastic. why not why not i think i think post covid is going to be all about collaborations you will see a lot happening that with wow momo and other companies and other brands and you will see a lot happening amongst yourselves so collaboration is going to be the next big thing and uh, be ready to the world of collaborations uh, mergers etc etc that's going to be the new now going forward Okay. In fact, in fact, keeping in mind uh, the the whole idea of collaborations and interdependence, uh, that's the reason why uh, I think Thai Mumbai has created Thai Food Network. And uh, Sagar, I think you know uh, it's amazing what you're doing with NRAI and uh, how uh, <clears throat> you you're taking out time from your own business and trying to um, help the fellow fellow food entrepreneurs. Uh, we at uh, Thai Food Network uh, <clears throat> completely support your initiative and uh, you know do a uh, do include us in all your initiatives and let us know how we can. Help you in let's, the same. Let's let's start working together. So the Thai Food Network and 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 R I the Bombay chapter can start working together. Yeah, for sure. We'll be more than happy to do that with you. And uh, I think I'll uh, I'm handed over to Naveen. Yeah, thanks a lot uh, for joining the session today. And I would request all the speakers if you could please type your uh, email addresses in the web chat that's happening right now. Uh, i think a lot of entrepreneurs have been kind of wanting to reach you guys and figure out if they can collaborate or get some great inputs and gyan from you guys so that will be really helpful uh, i i also think that you know like sagar said this is going to be a great time when all of you can collaborate right now and also post this uh, i i see a lot of you know entrepreneurs who are pinging about their services and things so what i would suggest is that you know maybe after i say a quick goodbye to all the speakers uh, i would request all the participants to stay back for maybe 10 minutes and and please type out all the services that you provide and and if there is anybody who wants to reach out i will leave the web chat open you can do a private message saying that you know what i've got solutions for you or i've got uh stuff that you're asking uh 
uh, we could use this. We, we in fact are thinking of doing a virtual marketplace very soon. Uh, we may come back to this next day, uh, next week rather. And the idea is if all of you as entrepreneurs have something that you want to buy now uh, in this time, maybe digital services or maybe stuff like that, uh, please do send us a note and, you know, we will create a virtual, uh, what is say, webinar where we will make it like an exhibition and, and, you know, Zoom allows you to have multiple, what is say, meeting rooms and we will do the matchmaking. This is what happens everywhere, but we'll do it virtually also. So if you have anything that you want to buy now, and, and I'm thinking a lot of it will be in the digital side of things, but please do say, including raw materials, ingredients, you need chefs, certainly of a certain thing, but I think the next Thai Food Network webinar could be all about, hey, you know what, there are 10 companies who want to buy something and we'll get you 50 people who can sell you those things. So let's start off business virtually also right now. And, and again, once again, thanks a lot. And uh, Sagar, great for uh, Thank you, sir. your time. Uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure being here. You know, Sagar is also a pretty strong player and a strong member of the Thai Kolkata team. Uh, and, uh, and thanks to Sagar, you know, Kolkata as a chapter also revived for Thai. And, and he came in only last year. Uh, also, thanks to all the other speakers. We've got a great session today. And uh, all the folks, please feel free to kind of write to us. Uh, the advantage of a Mumbai chapter is that, you know, we have very close relations with all the investors. Uh, that's our biggest, uh, what to say, call to fame in Mumbai. And uh, if, if there is any kind of thing that you need in terms of a funding or a direction in funding post COVID, uh, happy to kind of do that session or get the right people in. So thanks again, everyone. And uh, for people who want to stay back 10 minutes to chat. I have to leave. Is it okay? Sure, sure, sure. I I'm talking thanks, about thanks, the guys. last ones. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. See you. Uh, thanks, thanks see you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Pleasure being there. Bye. Bye. So I request all the participants who are there, if you now want to start saying what are you manufacturing and stuff, please do that. I also would kind of drop in my email address where, you know, what what we could do interestingly is maybe send us your send us your brochures or whatever you have. Uh, let's try and make a listing service of the Thai Food Network right now so people know across various segments what are the buyers and sellers and manufacturers. I hope that's an idea. Uh, Navinji, um, yeah. I'll, I'll uh, you know put across one point that I have. Okay. Uh, we are we are doing the similar front, a similar uh, thing. Uh, probably we have built uh, a network of a lot of manufacturers. We have built a network of a lot of uh, you know uh, service providers. We have built a network of a lot of chefs, advisors, master chefs, uh, chefs from uh, from Spain, Paris. So we've already started building on uh, that front. So okay. we can also discuss because like, like Sagar rightly said that uh, the idea is not to compete with uh, each other now. The idea is to collaborate now. So basically how can we work on, the, on this uh, together or probably can create a shared network uh, of you know, resources. No, see at Thai we don't, uh, build, we don't believe in trying to reinvent the wheel and build it. Exactly. So if, if there's a platform already like that, just send us the details. We will send it to all the participants here. And uh, if, if it's a ready-made marketplace and... No, it's not a marketplace, marketplace kind of a, this thing. But what we are doing is we are trying to help each other. For example, somebody is manufacturing A and somebody is manufacturing B. And the, these both are, uh, you know, um, uh, probably complementing uh, products to each other. So we try and connect with them and uh, both of them together so that they can start their own, uh, you know, uh, scaling up things. Sure. So this is what we have done. This is not a, not a, not a formal structure that we, uh, we have built. But um, we, we are associated with a lot of SaaS providers. We, have, uh, we are in touch with a lot of, uh, you know, auditing team. Uh, we are in touch with a lot of people, basically. So, uh, you know, because our, our uh, scales and our operation uh, requires us to connect with a lot of people. So we have this platform that we have created for uh, almost seven, eight years now. So uh, we thought of creating it, you know, on the same, uh, you know, giving it uh, a, a common platform to everybody so that everybody could enjoy the fruits. Perfect. I think, I think, I mean, that's a very good idea. So I think, you know, what we can do is we can, uh, we can probably float a Google form where people can put in whatever services they offer and then, you know, we can float it around. I think, uh, uh Gaurav, Gaurav and I have experienced it, you know, so I think Gaurav, Gaurav and I piggybacked, uh, on our fellow restauranters in Chandigarh, in uh, Bangalore, people have come to, people are using Gaurav's network in uh, Pune. Uh, we've done that across five cities. Uh, <clears throat> 
we fifteen twenty D two C brands are now using Sagar's platform to list on Wow Moms Essentials. We've already kind of been doing this offline as part of Thai Food Network. Uh, I think. Beautiful. I think uh, now uh, we would uh, now want to use your network, Prashant, in Indore, Pradesh, and Nasik. I think Abhinav uh, uh, will definitely uh, will be seeing Abhinav probably on Wow Moms Essentials and all of that. Thank so you. I think yeah, we've been we've been uh, speaking, and you you know for one thing for sure that rose naya chahiye Prashant ko dimag mein. कुछ नया खुजली रोज होता है आपका हार्वर्ड की स्टडी बना है हमारे आईआईटी में बनेगा हां करेक्ट सो वो रोज खुजली एक मिटाना होता है तो वी कीप ऑन यू नो बिल्डिंग लॉट ऑफ स्टफ प्रोबब्ली वी कैन नॉट कंप्लीट दैट साइकिल ऑलवेज बट यू नो इट्स ऑलवेज गुड टू स्टार्ट समथिंग वी आर लेट्स सी हाउ हाउ फार इट कैन गो एंड आई एम ऑलवेज वुड लव टू बी पार्ट ऑफ दिस थिंग इनफैक्ट आई वुड लव टू बी पार्ट ऑफ टाई फूड नेटवर्क आल्सो एंड प्रोबब्ली हाउ कैन आई बी ऑफ हेल्प टू यू आल्सो नवीन जी संकेत जी प्लीज लेट मी नो देयर आल्सो Sure. So, so yeah, we we soon do that. Yeah, we are going to <coughs> start enrolling. Uh, I mean, a separate membership for Thai Food Network. I mean, yeah, and so, it's not only product, but we have built a lot of service providers also with uh, with us. So the, the difference between uh, NRAI and Thai uh, Food Network is that NRAI will take on industry issues and lobby for you guys and work on licensing and stuff like that. We are pure pure helping entrepreneurs scale up and grow. Mm-hmm. so we go back to the basics of you know how do you start a company founder agreement tum logon ne barabar kiya ki nahi do you understand uh-huh. fundraising cycles kya hota hai how do you and 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 tie is nothing but connectors you know we get exactly various people to connect we we bring mentors that's it so we are not an industry association we are more mm-hmm. the folks that entrepreneurs at a very beginning stage to growth stage need us to come and help so so dono ka what to say uh, roles are very different so happy to collaborate with everybody at this time in fact we need to do much more than just collaborate i think we also need to like what sagar was saying put put down a good new industry standard that will become a gold standard for everybody and 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 even if if those conversations with a swiggy and a zomato need to be done uh, let's go through the what to say to the investors route we know the pre- private equity guys and the and, and the investors who have put money in them and uh, No harm in touching them and saying, "Hey, listen, some of this is what we are building." Yeah, yeah. So I think we can come out of it, and we are we are very positive that uh, yeah, COVID nineteen, you know, it will never kill humanity. You know, it'll, correct, correct. It may disrupt for a couple of months, but yeah, I think uh, we'll come out of it strong. And and the good thing about the web chat right now, I see, is that a lot of people are also asking. Mm-hmm. I, I saw somebody say, "I need chef," and somebody saying, "We can do this." So. so like one thing that i've always been saying i think within startups there's enough of business that is there you know it's, it's exactly not necessary that you need to go to a big brand or a big company uh, i think so this is this is navinji this is how the idea came to me also for okay. example so i am in touch with let's say almost uh, 28 29 different uh, uh, food franchise brands so they their things their requirements are similar are that of mine so they would be requiring a pos system they would be requiring an inventory system they would be requiring a audit guy they would be requiring a chef or a probably a you know um, um, staff provider or probably of some some uh, white label sauce to be manufactured so i have already done that bit sure. for past 7 8 years so i thought of sharing this network with the uh, fellow members of the team so that we both can grow together so i i i want to be in in the good books of uh, both the guys I I don't want any cut in the uh, or the commission. It's just that I would want to be in the good books of both the parties. Absolutely. So that's how the uh, journey has been. So uh, yes, we can obviously uh, uh, build that network also. Would love to be part of it. Would love to be part of anything that is growing. Yeah, our role is to help you all grow in, in whatever <laughs> form. So we we are happy to do that. Fantastic. So I think, guys, thanks a lot. Uh, we'll be sending you that Google form. Uh, please put all your details and let's start circulating that. And Prashant, we'll come to you so that oh, we can sure. take it forward and uh, let get and, and post COVID come to Indore also so that we can have uh, authentic Indore poha. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Abhinav ji, Pravesh ji, I would right. invite you all also. Gaurav ji, Rohit ji, Done. Rahul ji. We'll be there. We'll be there. Time. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Thank Lovely you. Meeting Thank all you guys. And, Thanks and for conducting this. You know, to kind of end with, let me tell you that. Thank you. Uh, all of you guys have been inspiring you know i mean coming from you know whatever you started when especially in tier 2 tier 3 cities where things are a lot more complicated than you know starting off in a metro 
hats off to you all and uh, and i look forward to kind of getting in touch with you all personally and uh, thank you everyone for making it today including the participants and folks please do not shy away to write to each other and keep in touch try and over communicate if not under communicate during these times and stay safe thank you guys thank, thank you, you thank you see you bye bye thank you everybody bye, bye. 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 bye.